one of the most useful complex numbers in the world, is called a primitive nth root of unity. So what do we mean by that? Well, unity here refers to the number one, nothing more, nothing less. Nth root, of course, refers to the usual thing. We're looking for a number, let's call it zeta sub n, that's the Greek letter for z, such that when we raise that number to the nth power, we get one. In other words, this should be a number which is a solution of the polynomial equation, t to the n minus one is equal to zero. So how are you going to find such a number? Well, if we expand our search from the reals, in which only plus and minus one would qualify, into the complex numbers, we can find one of these roots of unity by writing t in its polar form, r times e to the i theta, where e to the i theta is defined by Euler's formula. So if we raise both sides to the nth power, we'll end up with r to the n times e to the i n theta. And if we're setting that equal to 1, which is, at turns, 1 e to the i 0, then the modulus of that complex number, r to the n, has to be equal to 1. And since r, the modulus, is always real and non-negative, we can take r just to be equal to 1. Then, to find out a value for theta, we'll use Euler's formula that rewrites e to the i n theta as cosine of n theta plus i times the sine of n theta, equating that to 1 plus 0 i, and then setting the real parts equal to one another, we find that cosine of n theta should be equal to 1. So the basic principles of trigonometry tell us that n times theta is a number whose cosine is equal to 1, and there's only a few of those that qualify, namely, all of the multiples of 2 pi, 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, as well as all of their opposites. So in other words, n theta has to be 2 pi times some integer k. Whence we find out that theta must be 2 pi times any integer k divided by n. Putting these pieces all together, we find out that zeta n, our nth root of unity, has to have the form 1 times e to the i times 2 pi k over n, where k is any integer we like. So where are we going to find numbers that look like this in the complex plane? Since we know that r, their modulus, has to be equal to 1, we're going to find them on the unit circle, the set of all points in the complex plane whose distance from the origin is equal to 1. It includes numbers like 1 and i, for example. What the angles tell us, 2 pi k over n, is that all of our nth roots of unity are equally spaced on the unit circle by an angle of 2 pi over n. So as an example, let's suppose n is equal to 6th, so we're looking for the primitive 6th roots of unity. That angle, 2 pi over n, is 2 pi over 6, or pi over 3, or for the Luddites in the audience, 60 degrees. So in other words, these 6th roots of unity are going to be equally spaced on the unit circle by an angle of 60 degrees, one from another. And we know that the first of them where k is equal to 0, is the real number 1, which is always an nth root of 1. But as we start to increase k from 0 to 1, we find out that the first non-real 6th root of unity makes an angle of pi over 3 with the x-axis. We can use that to find coordinates at this point if we want to, but we're just going to draw the picture for now. Then the rest of the 6th roots of unity will be equally spaced apart again by that same 60 degree angle. And so the general statement that we can make is that the location of all the sixth roots of unity in the complex plane is that they lie at the vertices of a regular n-gon, so in this case a regular hexagon, centered at the origin and containing the point at 1. So now what do we mean by the word primitive? A primitive nth root of unity is going to be an nth root of unity whose powers generate all the other nth roots. In other words, it is an nth root of unity which determines all the other nth roots of unity. So how about our k equals 1 example? This is e to the pi i over 3, or cosine of pi over 3 plus i times the sine of pi over 3. This is really 1 half plus i times radical 3 over 2. What are its powers? Well, if z is there, then z squared is over there at k equals 2. z cubed is at k equals 3. z to the fourth, z to the fifth, z to the sixth is back at the real number 1. After all, z to the sixth is equal to 1 because z is the sixth root of unity. But then, we've just shown that the powers of that z generate all the sixth roots of unity. And so that z, e to the i times 2 pi i over 6, or e to the pi i over 3, is in fact primitive. It's not the only primitive sixth root of unity, but there are some sixth roots of unity that are not primitive. For example, if k is equal to 2, then we get e to the 2 pi i over 3. If that's z, then z squared is e to the 4 pi i over 3, which is down in the third quadrant, z cubed is equal to 1, z to the fourth is back in the second quadrant, and so forth. So in fact, that sixth root of unity only generates three out of the six sixth roots of unity, 
and therefore e to the 2 pi i over 3 is not a primitive sixth root of unity. But all is not completely lost, because it is a primitive third root of unity. So another way to think of it, a primitive nth root is an nth root which is not a smaller root of unity. So this red example, e to the 2 pi i over 3 was not primitive sixth root, because it also happened to be a third root of unity, whereas that wasn't true of e to the pi i over 3. So, what's our most general statement, the most obvious way to get a primitive nth root of unity? Well, the most gener obvious generator of the integers is the number 1, and therefore, taking k equals 1 in our formula will guarantee that we generate all the nth roots of unity, and therefore have a primitive nth root. And so what we usually mean when we say the primitive nth root of unity is we mean the choice where k is equal to 1. So 1 times e to the 2 pi i over n. That's what we're going to call the primitive nth root of unity, zeta n. And using Euler's formula, we can write that out as the cosine of 2 pi over n plus i times the sine of 2 pi over n. And looking on the complex plane, that's the complex number that makes an angle of 2 pi over n with a positive x-axis on the unit circle.